Welcome to our show, The China Briefing. Today, we dive into the intriguing world of Hong Kong's Mid-Autumn Festival, where despite a ban on single-use plastics, glow sticks continue to light up the shops. Vendors are racing to clear their stock before the ban kicks in next month, with many families opting to immigrate and sales plummeting by at least 30% compared to last year. Next, we shift our focus to the skies, as airlines are set to reduce flights between China and the Philippines due to low demand and geopolitical tensions. Major players like AirAsia and China Southern Airlines are scaling back, reflecting the broader economic slowdown and safety concerns that are steering travelers towards domestic options instead. Finally, we explore the lithium mining sector, where Rio Tinto is eyeing acquisitions to enhance its position amidst a downturn in prices. With Canadian lithium producers facing challenges, the government is open to foreign investments, except those linked to China. As demand for lithium is expected to soar by 2030, the race for consolidation is heating up. Please stay tuned for more detailed insights. South China Morning Post reports on the ongoing sale of glow sticks in Hong Kong shops despite a ban on single-use plastics that took effect in April. As the mid-autumn festival approaches, vendors are eager to clear their existing stock, with many shops openly advertising this as the last opportunity to purchase such items. Quan Wingho, who has been selling festival decorations for over three decades, noted that his shop has reduced its order of glow sticks, anticipating the end of a grace period for the ban. While some shops still have leftover products from previous years, the overall interest in glow sticks has dwindled, as environmental concerns take precedence. The festive atmosphere has also diminished, with a notable decline in sales of traditional lanterns and decorations, attributed to a shrinking population and changing entertainment preferences among children. South China Morning Post also highlights the challenges facing airlines operating between China and the Philippines, as low demand and geopolitical tensions have led to planned flight reductions. Analysts indicate that the ongoing economic struggles in China, including a property market crisis and reduced consumer spending, have contributed to a significant drop in travel. Major airlines like AirAsia Philippines and China Southern Airlines are scaling back their operations, with Cebu Pacific's president stating that restoring flights to Beijing is not feasible due to insufficient demand. The maritime sovereignty dispute between the two nations has further exacerbated the situation, deterring potential travelers and affecting the airline's profitability. As a result, the industry is witnessing a significant shift, with many airlines reconsidering their routes and operations in light of the current geopolitical climate. The Globe and Mail examines the impending wave of acquisitions in the lithium mining sector, driven by the recent slump in lithium prices and the growing demand for electric vehicle batteries. Global giant Rio Tinto is positioned to become a dominant player, with analysts predicting that the Canadian government will approve acquisitions as long as they do not involve Chinese buyers. The downturn in lithium stocks presents a prime opportunity for Rio Tinto to expand its holdings, especially as the demand for lithium is expected to more than double by 2030. With potential targets like Arcadium Lithium PLC, which has valuable projects in Quebec and Argentina, the landscape of the lithium industry in Canada is set for transformation. The Canadian government has previously shown a willingness to greenlight such deals, reflecting a broader strategy to bolster the domestic critical minerals industry amidst increasing foreign interest. South China Morning Post, Justin Hartley's romantic journey has unfolded like a captivating film, marked by notable relationships and a recent marriage to Sophia Punners, his co-star from The Young and the Restless. After his divorces from Lindsay Corman Hartley and Chris Hell Storrs, Hartley found love again with Punners, whom he first met in 2015 while working on the soap opera. Their relationship blossomed after Hartley's split from Storrs in 2019, leading to a secret wedding in May 2021. Sophia, who has a rich multicultural background and is fluent in five languages, has made a name for herself in the acting world with roles in various popular TV shows. The couple enjoys a harmonious relationship, often collaborating professionally, and Sophia has embraced her role as a stepmom to Hartley's daughter, Isabella. South China Morning Post The academic landscape in China is undergoing a significant transformation as the government intensifies its crackdown on research misconduct amidst a backdrop of escalating competition with the United States in technology. 
The Ministry of Science and Technology recently named and banned several researchers, including the prominent figure Sun Beicheng, for misconduct related to state-funded projects. This move signals a shift towards prioritizing integrity in research as Beijing seeks to foster genuine innovation. With a focus on quality over quantity, the government aims to ensure that funds are allocated to deserving projects, especially in the wake of corruption scandals that have plagued the scientific community. As China strives to overcome barriers in advanced technology, the emphasis on maintaining high academic standards is crucial for its long-term ambitions. South China Morning Post The Philippines is at a critical crossroads in addressing its maritime disputes with China in the South China Sea, as tensions continue to escalate. Recent confrontations between Chinese and Philippine vessels have raised alarms about the Philippines' ability to maintain its naval presence in contested waters. Amidst this backdrop, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command Chief Samuel Paparo has reiterated the readiness of the United States to support the Philippines under their mutual defense treaty. However, Philippine officials are divided on the best course of action, with some advocating for direct military assistance and others preferring to rely on self-sufficiency. The Marcos administration is exploring various strategies, including enhancing defense cooperation with multiple nations and reassessing the existing treaty with the US to better address the challenges posed by China's assertiveness. As the situation evolves, the Philippines must navigate its approach carefully to safeguard its sovereignty while avoiding escalation. New York Times reports on a troubling incident involving a man named Ryan Wesley Routh, who has been charged with firearm offenses after attempting to get close to Donald Trump at a Florida golf course. Routh, aged 58, spent approximately 12 hours waiting near the venue before being spotted by a Secret Service agent, who subsequently opened fire. Fortunately, Trump was not harmed during the confrontation, as Routh did not have him in his sightline and did not discharge his weapon. The incident has raised serious concerns regarding the effectiveness of the Secret Service, particularly as this marks the second time in two months that an individual has managed to approach Trump in such a manner. President Biden has called for increased support for the agency, highlighting the escalating political violence in America, which has been fueled by the divisive figure of Trump. In the backdrop of these events, Americans are preparing to head to the polls in less than 60 days, with political analysts noting a potential shift in dynamics, particularly regarding Vice President Kamala Harris. South China Morning Post highlights the recent discussions between U.S. defense officials and their Chinese counterparts, focusing on China's support for Russia amidst the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. During talks in Beijing, U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Michael Chase expressed concerns over China's contribution to Russia's military capabilities and the implications for global security. The U.S. administration has been vocal about its belief that Chinese companies are assisting Russia in sustaining its war efforts, which has led to sanctions targeting entities in Hong Kong and mainland China. Additionally, tensions in the South China Sea have escalated, with the Philippines reporting a significant increase in Chinese maritime vessels in its claimed waters, raising questions about the U.S.'s potential intervention under a long-standing defense treaty with the Philippines. The Pentagon's statements underscore the growing apprehensions regarding China's intentions and capabilities in the Indo-Pacific region, positioning it as a significant competitor to the US in maintaining the rules-based order established post-World War II. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.
News breaks, buzz the ground, stories spin, walls come down, voices merge in the sound, faces mix in the crowd, broadcasters paint the scene, world events on our screen, every link a different theme, words collide in the stream, six degrees connect the dots, background stories more than not. Across the globe, spin the threads in a stroke. Every story wears a robe, truth and lies in their code. Journalists dig real deep, 